Hello and welcome to Math 373, uh, Trigonometry for Calculus. I'm your professor, da uh, Professor Nick Dale, um, and uh, I just want to welcome you to the course. Uh, so the idea behind this video is to go over the syllabus, give you an idea of how this course is going to be structured, kind of give you a sense of what it is you're walking into. Um, so again, trigonometry, this is what the course is. Uh, you'll notice here a couple of different course codes. This this course is paired with a support course, which about half of you are enrolled in. Um, so if you're in the support course, you should already know that, and uh, you'll be you know reviewing a, a, a syllabus video for that course as well. Um, but if you're not in the support course, then that doesn't apply to you, so don't worry about that. Um, you'll notice here my name, email address. This is one way to uh, communicate with me. You can also uh, message me through our Canvas page. Um, which is a really good way to uh, get a hold of me if you need anything. Um, let's go ahead and just go over uh, what it is that we're doing in this course and how we're going to structure things. So the, the textbook that we're using in this book is um, actually a free textbook. It's available on openstacks.org. Uh, I'll mention that a, a little bit later, but this is the name of the book. It's just called Algebra and Tri Trigonometry. Um, this can be used for an algebra trig combo course, um, but because we're only doing trigonometry, we're only going to be covering chapters 7 through 10 in that book. Okay, so again, that's available for free. You can purchase a hard copy of the textbook if that's what you want to do, but I, I recommend just downloading it for free. Um, Below this, uh, this mention of the textbook here is the catalog description for, uh, for this course as well as um, the uh, student learning outcomes for the course listed down here. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to read through those. All of those are available in the, in the course catalog, but I encourage you to look over those on your own just to you know, see what to expect from this course. You'll see right here that I, I mentioned you'll need a graphing or scientific calculator for this course. My recommendation is a TI-83 or an 84. Those are kind of the standard graphing calculators that do everything you need them to do, not only for this class, but for you know calculus and things that come later. Um, because this class is being held online, you may opt to use you know something on a desktop computer as opposed to something you have to pay for, and that's fine as well. Uh, but you know, if you have if you have the money and you want something that's gonna be useful for you know other courses beyond this one, it's not a bad idea to get one of those. Um, so let's kind of move forward, get into the stuff that is more relevant to you. Um, right here is my, is my motto that I put on every syllabus for every course that I teach. It says, remember, math is not a spectator sport. Nobody becomes proficient at math simply by listening to lectures. The key to success is practice, practice, practice. It's an incredibly cliche little motto, but I, I think it's very true. Um, the idea there is that uh, far more than other disciplines, math is one of those things that you really aren't going to learn very well just by watching somebody explain it to you. Um, even the best explainer out there is not going to uh, give you a mastery over material like this. It takes, it takes time and effort and you need to be hands-on with it if you want to learn it. Uh, so what that means is you need to stay on top of the homework make sure that you are um, devoting time to, to working through the problems that I assign so that you know what it is you're doing by the time we get to a test. Okay. Now below that I mentioned the, the textbook, so I did say that the textbook is available for free. Right here in blue is a link that will take you to the textbook. Um, and I, I recommend just downloading the PDF so you have it um, on, your, on your computer and you don't need to be online to access it that way. Um, so Get the textbook today if you haven't already. Okay, um, how do we do this class? Because this is an online course, and uh, online by necessity. I'm not really um, usually teaching online, but right now everybody is, given the circumstances. So, the way that we're going to proceed with the course is we're going to we're going to handle it asynchronously. What that means is that there are no official meeting times. Um, Instead of doing things like Zoom meetings, which a lot of instructors are doing right now, I've opted to go a different route. Um, all of my lecture videos, I'm I'm recording ahead of time and posting on my YouTube channel, and then I'm going to uh, embed those videos in pages on Canvas. And the way you're going to pace yourself throughout the course is that every Monday, 
I'm going to post a module on Canvas that's going to have all of the lecture videos as well as all of the lecture notes uh, for, for that week. And that'll show at the very beginning of the week, Monday morning. What you, are, what you need to do is, is take a look at that module and watch the lecture videos over the course of that week. Pace it out in a way, in a way that works for you. And you need to be working on the homework assignment during that time as well. So when you finish, you know, watching a lecture video, I'd recommend, you know, trying and work, try to work through the homework for that, that section, you know, and then go to the next lecture video and so on, you know. Um, I'll talk more about how homework works in a bit, but that's the way that we're going to do lectures. It's going to be pre-recorded um, from my YouTube channel. Now, that presents an issue because normally if we're meeting in person, if I'm going through a lecture and you're confused or if you want me to clarify something, you raise your hand and ask a question. But how do we do that if all of these videos are pre-recorded? Well, my, my approach there is uh, using the discussions tab in Canvas. So what I'm going to do is for every chapter that we cover in the course, and it's chapters 7 through 10, I'm going to create two different discussion topics in the discussion forum. Uh, there's going to be one for the lecture videos for that chapter, and there's going to be one for the homework for that chapter. So that's where you go to ask questions if you need help. Please, please, please use the discussion forums for questions. Do not email questions on lecture videos or homework to me. Now, I know I'm saying that right now, and I'm still going to get dozens of people who want to do that. Um, you, you need to reserve those sorts of questions for the discussion forum. And there's a couple of reasons why I'm insisting that you do it that way. One, being a math course, there's a lot of symbols that we use that are not just present on your keyboard, things that are not easy to type out in an email. Um, but the discussion forum has uh, some markup language that allows me to um, use those symbols. So I can actually communicate much more effectively using the discussion forums. Secondly, the, the questions and answers that appear in the discussion forums are available for everybody in the class to see. So what that means is if I have, you know, 20 students asking a question about one of my lectures, I only need to answer that question once. I don't need to respond to 20 separate emails. That's incredibly inefficient, and I don't see any, any reason why I would ever want to do that. Um, so please use the discussion forums to ask questions. Um, now, other students are also encouraged to answer questions as well. I, I really like students working together and learning from each other. Sometimes you learn from each other better than you learn from me. So that's, that's highly recommended. If you feel like you're understanding something that a student is asking, feel free to jump in there and answer a question. But if not, I'll, I'll answer those questions as well. Um, now, the way that I want you to ask questions in the discussion forums is to basically be as specific as possible. So I'm going to talk about that in two different ways. One, if you're asking a question about a lecture video, uh, don't just say something like this. I, I didn't understand that example from section 2.1. Can you elaborate? I'm going to be confused what you're talking about. What I need you to do is tell me exactly which video you have a question on. Um, and just so you know, most of the videos are broken up into several parts. So for example, section 7.1, our very first section that we cover, I think is it spans like three or four different videos because I had to break it up into parts to make it uploadable. Um, you have to tell me which video and specifically which part uh, you're asking the question from and also give me the time code. So say something like this, you know, the example that you worked out in uh, section 7.1 part 3 at the 7 minute mark was confusing to me. Can you clarify that? That way I know exactly where to look in the, in the video to see what it is you're talking about and I can more effectively answer your question that way. Um, let's suppose instead you're asking a homework question in one of the homework topics. What I need you to do there, in addition to telling me exactly what section and problem number you're asking a question about, I need you to tell me what it is you tried. Okay? Um, at this level, you really can't just take two seconds to look at a homework problem and decide, well, I can't do it, I'm going to ask for help. You need to spend some time thinking about it, trying things, and you should reserve questions on homework problems for when you feel like you've exhausted your other options and you don't know what, what to do 
right? Because once you've done that, you can go into the discussion forum and you can say, okay, I'm struggling with problem number 13 in section 10.1. Here's what I tried, but I'm getting stuck here. Then I know exactly how to help you. But if all you say is, I don't know how to do problem 13 in section 10.1, then to me, what, that's, what that sounds like is, do the problem for me. And, and most of the time, I'm not going to just do the problem for you. You see, I've already taken this course as a student. I've learned the material. My job is now to teach it to you. So what I need you to do is is you do the thinking, right? Uh, so in, in, uh, in the discussion forums, what I'll probably do is give you some kind of a hint or some kind of a general um, idea of where to go. I might even work through the first couple of steps of a problem with you and then leave the rest to you. Um, so if you can tell me exactly what it is you're struggling with, that tells me what part of the process I should you know, provide you with help on. Um, but anyways, that's, that's gonna be the most efficient way to handle questions. That's how I want us to work, that, work through those things is in the discussions tab. <clears throat> All right, now, um, although we're meeting online, I'm not using any uh, software for homework assignments. I'm not using like, you know, my math lab or, or any of those other things. What we're gonna do is uh, all of our assignments, all of our tests are gonna be handwritten as you usually would in a traditional math class. And the way you're going to submit your work is by scanning it and, and sending it in uh, or submitting it in Canvas. And we'll, we'll show you later how, how you do that. Um, that requires that you have a scanner. Now, you don't necessarily need to have a hardware scanner, you know, or like a scanner printer combo, like, like some people have. Um, that's expensive equipment. If you don't already have one, you don't need to go out and buy one. Um, a better option is to use a smartphone app. So there's actually, if you own a smartphone, there's a lot of free apps that do a very good job scanning documents. Um, and I recommend a couple in here, Cam Scanner. Uh, the one mentioned right here is one that a lot of my students have been using um, in the past couple of semesters that we've been doing this online thing. Um, that's a great one. It's free. Um, I actually use the uh, scanner that's built into the Dropbox app. I use Dropbox for my documents, so I have an account there, um, and their app has a scanner that is built in and it works well enough for what I need it for. So that's a good option. There's others out there you can kind of experiment with. But here's what you need your scanner to be able to do. It needs to be able to scan multiple pages into one file. And it needs to be able to scan to a PDF. Now, pretty much all of these scanners will submit to, or will, um, will uh, scan to a PDF by default. So that's not really a hard thing to find, you know, a, a, an app that'll do that. Um, but the key thing is that the, the the PDFs need to be multiple pages as opposed to several one-page PDFs, okay? Um, and I'll mention that again when we talk about homework. Anytime you're scanning either a homework assignment or an exam, please, please look at your scan before you submit it. Look over the whole thing, all the pages, make sure it's legible and in the correct order. Because what I've been seeing occasionally um, with these scanned assignments is you know students will submit like a pen a 10 page homework assignment and like one of the pages will be extremely blurry um to the point where it's unreadable and that can happen for a variety of reasons with these with these smartphone apps if you don't have good lighting sometimes it comes out blurry or if you if your phone moves as you're trying to scan it it'll create a blur sort of effect um, and when you're scanning several pages at once it's easy to to not notice that happening so do not submit assignments or exams until you've looked it over thoroughly to make sure nothing is blurry. Also, for homework assignments, which we'll talk about in a moment, please make sure your homework is in order. Okay, so if your homework assignment has all of the problems from 7.1 through 7.3, make sure they're in order from 7.1 to 7.2 to 7.3. Now that sounds, that, that sounds probably fairly basic and expected, but I still occasionally get homework assignments from students that are in some kind of mixed up order. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, I, I do not have time to decipher the order that you intended it to be in. So if I get, if I get homework assignments that are 
all mixed up and out of order, I'm not even going to look at it. I'm going to just say you need to submit this again in the correct order. Um, so make sure it's it's that way when you turn it in the first time. Homework assignments. I'm going to give you a homework assignment sheet in Canvas that's going to contain all of the problem numbers uh, or all, all of the uh, assignments for the entire semester right up front. So you'll have all of the homework for the whole semester right at the beginning of the semester. And I'm going to assign homework on a weekly basis. So um, each week you're going to be working through uh, the homework for all of the sections that I covered in the lectures for that week. Um, <clears throat> And then you're going to submit your homework each Monday of the following week by 11.59 p.m. And you'll see on Canvas, I'll, I'll put the assignments up. You should see in your little calendar on Canvas when things are due. Um, uh, so that, that's how I'm going to do that. Each section of homework is worth five points, and that'll total up to whatever it totals up to each week. Um, I don't, I'm not going to accept any late assignments, so you need to make sure you have things in on time. You have until 11.59 p.m. each Monday to submit the previous week's homework packet. And the way that I grade homework, those five points for each section, it's going to be based on completeness. Um, just to be transparent with you, I, uh, teaching from home has not been um, the smoothest and easiest transition for me. Um, it would be fine if I lived alone and I had the option to kind of you know, work whenever I want, but I have two little kids here, I have a puppy, um, I have my wife here, I have a lot going on at home, and you'll probably hear some of that in some of my lecture, lecture videos. Kids screaming in the background, dogs barking. That's just the situation, unfortunately. But um, the uh, that leaves me with very limited time also. So, um, uh, I don't have time to go through and look at um, accuracy on, uh, you know, correctness on your homework assignments. So it's, I'm really going to be looking through them and seeing, you know, did you try everything that I assigned? Uh, and does it look like you actually did work or does it look like you just copied answers out of the back of the book or from some other resource? Um, if it looks like you tried everything, then you'll, you'll get the full credit for it. Homework is going to be worth cumulatively 30% of your grade, and I you do need to take it seriously. You know, don't just write in a bunch of junk because I, I you, you know I'm grading for completeness. If you're not doing the homework, you're not going to do well in the exams. It's as simple as that. So make sure you're putting in the time and the effort. Exams. Let's move on to that. I, I'm going to give four exams over the course of the semester. And I'm going to drop your lowest score. So I'm only going to count the top three exam scores. I do no extra credit. I, I do not do extra credit. So that's the safety net that I offer, dropping that one lowest test score. Now, the way that we uh, do exams in this course, they're going to be on specific days, but I'm not going to hold them at specific times during that day. Um, you'll get a calendar in Canvas where you're, you're going to see when all of our test days are. And um, on that uh, or on those days, you'll be able to access the test whenever you're able to. Um, but once you've accessed the test, it's a timer is going to start. You're going to have two hours and 15 minutes to complete, scan, and submit your exam. Um, and you need to make sure that you have it in before the two hours and 15 minutes. The exams are intended to be two-hour exams, but really two hours is is generally much more time than students typically need. Um, the extra 15 minutes here is to account for the time that it takes to scan your exam, submit it in Canvas, and potentially you know, deal with any technical difficulties that sometimes arise in that process. So you do not want to aim to be completing your exam at the 2 hour and 14 minute mark, leaving yourself 1 minute to submit your exam. Uh, make sure you leave yourself time. I'll mention that again when we get closer to exam days. Um, it, it, as far as um, uh, what's acceptable on exams, again, because we're doing this remotely, and I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm simply not at all interested in using one of those, you know, proctoring software programs that some people use. Where I, I, you know, there's software out there where you have to have all of your students with webcams, and I'm like watching you take the test. I have no interest in doing that. Um, so there is sort of an honor system happening here. But I will mention a little bit about cheating. Um, uh, a little bit later. Um, you have your book available to you, you have your notes available to you. That's really all I want you to be using. I don't want you to be using online resources, 
copying things from websites, stuff like that. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about about that in a moment, like I said. Exams are worth 50% of your grade. Um, and that's, I think, all there is to say on that. Final exam, this is standard stuff. 20% of your, fi of your uh, final grade is from your final exam. And it's cumulative. Um, you'll be given extra time because it'll be longer than a normal exam. So that's going to be three hours and 15 minutes instead of the usual two hours and 15 minutes. Um, and you'll, you'll, you'll submit it in the same way that you do normal exams. So not much to talk about there. Um, and that's it as far as graded work. You notice it's very, very bare bones. Homework, exams, final exam. This is not normally how I run a class. Um, if we were meeting uh, in person, there would be more to that. I'd spread out these percentages among a couple of the categories. Normally I give quizzes in addition to exams. And I also, um, for a lot of my classes, do warm-up problems that I grade. Um, because of the current situation with COVID and having to do everything online, I just want to keep everything as simple as possible. Homework exams, final exams, nothing complicated there. Um, that's how I, I that's how I want to do it this semester. Here's my grading scale. This is sort of the standard one. Nothing fancy there. Okay, let's talk about cheating for a moment. Um, so I, I have a little blurb about cheating that you can read here. Um, so. Uh, I just taught a course, a couple of courses over the summer, and um, when I was grading one of the exams for that course, I noticed that several students had very similar looking exam or answers for one of the problems. And not only did they all look very similar, but they were all being answered in a very bizarre way, in a way that I did not teach in that class. Um, so that got me a little suspicious. Um, so what I did is I went online and I looked around and I know all of the resources that students use. I know about Chegg, I know about Slater, I know about the whole slew of uh, forums online that students use to ask homework and exam questions. I have accounts on all of those things. I'm, I, I frequent them regularly. I found um, uh, one of my exam questions scanned and uploaded onto Chegg. And, uh, somebody on Chegg had given the answer to that exam, but they had answered it in kind of an unusual way, which is what tipped me off. And then several students copied that that problem down on their exam and just submitted that. So that's plagiarism. And if you do that on an exam, and if I find it, it's just an immediate zero on that exam. Um, there's not going to be, you're not, you can plead your case, but it's probably not gonna go anywhere if it's if it's an obvious, plagiarism like it was in this case. Um, don't don't risk that. Again, there's not a lot that you're graded on in this course, and exams make up the biggest chunk of your grade. You do not want to be getting zeros on exams because you cheated, okay? So don't risk it. I may miss it. You may get away with it, um, but I am using those resources pretty regularly to see if students are, um, are cheating. So I don't think it's worth the risk. Um, last little bit here, students with learning or physical disabilities or with any special needs should let me know as soon as possible about the accommodations needed. Um, and then you can ignore this last part right here because we're not meeting in person. This, this thing in the parentheses doesn't really apply. But um, normally when we meet in person, there's a number of accommodations that, that a student might need. And uh, because we're meeting remotely, um, a lot of those are kind of taking care of themselves. But um, if there are accommodations that are needed, typically they fall into the category of extended test time. And those accommodations are approved through DSPS, through our, through our campus. Um, so if you have gone through the process of getting accommodations approved through DSPS, I just need to have the paperwork showing me what those accommodations are um, from DSPS, and that way I can make, I can make them. Uh, so make sure I get that paperwork if you know that you need something like that extended test time or whatever it happens to be. All right, um, that's everything on our syllabus. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me at the email address uh, that I showed at the beginning. Um, but other than that, I'm looking forward to a great semester.